really good. I mean, before, before we wrap up and finish, I just wanted to ask, like, how would you say, like, if you sum up say games and voodoo's forays into mm. hybrid casual, how would you say they differ and how would you say they're the same? Um, or who does are, better? Yeah, who does? Yeah, yeah. My th I think uh, say games. Say games. I think problem, so too, right? The problem with voodoo one is that they don't have many of these and it's still better to have like five failed pirate raids. This is no bullshit gaming podcast, two and a half gamers. Sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. We are definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but having so much fun. Let's not forget this is a 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. Yeah, okay. take it take away, Maven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome everyone it's uh it's your favorite crew uh it's uh two and a half gamer session number 72 my name is Matija Lancharic I'm Felix Broberg and I'm Jakub Remier and we are your hosts uh so before we start talking about our main topic today we have a few things uh I would I want to talk about South Korea we are leaving next week well I guess this episode is going live on Monday, so we are leaving today. <laughs> We're flying as you hear this. <laughs> yes, you, exactly. So we are above your heads, obviously, in the plane. <laughs> okay, so we see you there. We have the Two and a Half Gamers Mobile Summit, which is oversubscribed. <laughs> By a lot. <laughs> yeah, we have seven, 70, 70 people. Well, 70, yeah, 70 spots cap capacity, and we have well, like 200 people signed up. Thank you very much. See you there. Uh, and then we have App Lab in App Amplify event. So it's going to be also very interesting. Uh, see you also there. Uh, thank you, App Lab in, for inviting us there as well. Uh, and then secondly, some industry friends reached out after our episode uh, about Voodoo. Uh, that mob control revenue is actually three or four times higher than what we, uh, we discussed. Good job, guys, uh, from Voodoo. And uh, thanks for uh, telling us like how it actually is because we all, all already had some different numbers in the tools that we use. But yeah, what can uh, what can we do? I know, uh, can... uh, like uh, one point for Voodoo and one negative point for all the data tools that we use. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, uh, today... We actually continue our hyper casual to hybrid casual uh, story, and now we are talking about say games. So again, uh, say games, and I, you know, I will quote from an article uh, that was published by our very good friend Neil Long from Mobile Gamer Biz. Cheers to you. Cheers to you, Felix, as well. So. Uh, in that article, he was talking to, to Yegor, the CEO of Say Games, and uh, and I quote, this year, uh, which is 2023, is certainly going to be difficult for those studios who relied on the old hyper-casual success formula. He also says that uh, future success is going to depend on studios' ability to create deeper game experiences as well as publishers' Uh, we'll nurture these qualities and share expertise to help developers grow. So I found an interesting update to the article and to the, <laughs> to the interview uh, because uh, they were talking about how, say, game is moving from hyper-casual to hybrid-casual, but there is a very big but. Say Games representatives reported that the portal mobilegamer.biz incorrectly understood the words of the... <laughs> <laughs> The words of the CEO and uh, about the company's departure from hyper casual games. So, so I quote: uh, "They we continue to work on creating new hyper casual games with our partners, but at the same time, we are increasing the amount of resources allocated to the development of hybrid casual games uh, due to the strategic focus on this genre, which is, I mean, obvious." They even like five months ago, uh, Say Games published a post on LinkedIn saying uh, um, something about like their achievements. So they achieved exceptional growth in in app purchases revenue, reaching 37.5 million in 2022, which is a year over year increase of 350%. And they said this is a testament to their successful hybrid monetization strategy, which includes advanced publishing tools, growing the expert team, 
whatever that means. And uh, join Shift to Live Ops games with 30 plus developer partners. Hmm. So, you know. Uh, w- one tidbit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, art, the article that Neil posted there was quoted, or let's say the title of the article was Hypercasual Firms Must Adapt or Die. Yeah. Maybe that was the misunderstood part. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, they published like, well, like above, uh, like more than 100 games uh, and reached $4 billion. I mean, that's impressive. Um, but they only have well, like four hybrid casual games. Well, only. <laughs> I mean, top hybrid casual games include Dreamdale, uh, Squad Alpha, My Little Universe, and I think what like Pirate Raid as well. But today we are going to talk about Dreamdale and Pirate Raid. So let's fucking go, guys. How yeah, should that? game design go first or? Yeah, just one note for those uh, curious why we're not talking about Squad Alpha being the second game with the most IP revenue in the portfolio. We are picking <laughs> a different game because Mr. Felix Hill thought it was too casual for him. Not hybrid casual. <laughs> That's one thing. And the other thing is that... Which is Squad Alpha? Squad Alpha, yeah. It's an iteration of Archero, which we yeah. covered like four or five times this model. And this time we're picking Pirate Raid, which is not that successful. And we're going to talk also why we think it's not that successful but it's a hybrid casual one and also you, you should say you love pirates and of you course, need I pirate love pirates. Game. But, but i love pirates i'm sorry pirates like, the second things. ship you get is the queen anne's revenge i was just like this is great and you were complaining the whole time <laughs> I'll, I'll get to it. Oh, i like the game yeah let, let's continue go on felix <laughs> okay so should i start uh could you pull up dreamdale yeah. uh, and basically show some gameplay while i'm doing this so is it just me, or is Dreamdale like a casual version of the scavenging game Last Day on Earth? Like, it, it, it just really like a lot of similarities. Man, it's like the most happiest thing ever. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> just want to give a brief intro to like what the game is all about, Remo, and like how it works, and then I can talk about the admon stuff because yeah. it's li- really interesting. Like, they've actually made some really ingenious, clever solutions here, and it's going to be interesting to talk about it. Oh, nice. So he's yeah. the reward <laughs> right video the simulator. Show. But uh, Rima, do you just want to give a brief introduction to Dreamdale and like how the game works? Yep, sure. So Dreamdale is pretty much this kind of a survival base builder slash RPG that uh, seems, I would say, very clever. It's literally the game you know from the creatives, not the one you're currently watching. As <laughs> Being force-fed creatives is one of the specialties of that game. But the... Uh, but uh, yeah, here here you can see, for instance, let me go here. So you, you're picking resources that are pretty much being piled up onto you. And then when you need to pay them and like whatever, build something or kind of do something somewhere, they pretty much literally just pop up out of your backpack. And it's very similar to that Golden Goblins creative that a lot of uh, market participants ad- adapted. And this is that game, literally. So the whole UI is pretty much offset into the game itself. You, you see, like, you don't really go through. There's just one button control, which is very clever. And on top of that, they added some RPG mechanics. You have uh, item progression. You have combat there. You have dungeons. You have, like, some other mechanics that I probably haven't unlocked yet because I was force fed too much ads. And then, um, yeah. Maybe if you play on your phone, you can you can uh, turn off the internet connection or Wi-Fi, and then you can play without ads. I did that for the pirate game for pirates. Like <laughs> yeah, I actually have to do it as well, but we'll get there later. <laughs> of course, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so... I, ju- I just wanted to have the, all of the experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, all of the experience on your fucking uh, PC. Can you get your mobile phone out of your pocket? But but from an admon perspective, Dreamdale is super interesting because the whole economy is held up by the rewarded ad unit, which is like everywhere. It depends, like it appears every time you're in need of anything, any of your problems in this game can be solved with a rewarded ad. (laughs) As soon as you like hit a little bit of friction, uh, there's a rewarded ad unit to help you along. (laughs) There's rewarded ad slots for gaining in-game currency, uh, in-game consumables like pets or powered up tools that you can use for like five minutes. There's wearables that appear like randomly on the game mat. uh, Game map. Uh, Honestly, there's so many rewarded video placements that is hard to count. 
Uh, once you watched a boatload of rewarded videos, <laughs> that's when you start getting hit with interstitial ads. Uh, they appear randomly at about a three or four minute increments at first, and then it starts getting smaller and smaller the increments. Uh, or like when upgrades have been made, that's also when they pop up. So what's most interesting from an admon perspective is actually found in the store. Uh, so if you go into the store, Remo, oh, no, you got an interstitial, oh, so you can go in the store. <laughs> okay, so you can, oh, remove, this, oh, for, you can remove forced ads uh, or interstitials for eight ninety nine, along with some wooden coins. But what's really struck me from an admon perspective when you're first playing this game is that all the rewarded ads seem to have the super aggressive end cards and last at very long duration. So the 40 to 60 second videos that are super annoying, usually ad one managers like try to tame, you know, the networks like down network. We don't want to see that. And basically showing shorter and less aggressive end cards. So because these longer ad formats hurts retention, but Dreamdale just went nuts on this long end for comrade. They're just letting everyone go wild. And it didn't make sense to me at all until I went into the store. And what's super interesting is that in the store, you can buy tickets. Uh, with one ticket, you can skip one rewarded ad and you get the reward. So my theory here is that they don't care about the annoying end cards and the long video end quality because they simply want to push users to buy these tickets, tickets so they can skip it all together. Man, genius! Isn't isn't this skip it as we do? We discussed this in the yeah. in the previous. The new hybrid casual yeah. monetization method. Skip it. Yeah. So <laughs> every like these tickets, they work out to about twenty cents skipping a rewarded ad unit. So take the Google 30% and Apple tax. That means that Say Games is earning about 14 cents a ticket compared to uh, two to three cents that a rewarded ad mm. impression in America will fetch you. So, you know, it's quite a big premium on top of that. So nice. quite interesting. So I think that they're basically trying to make the rewarded ad experience so dreadful that they're basically so you, pushing you, users to buy these tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so uh i would say probably from my estimates that dreamdale imp dao is around 11 and interstitials is around four uh i'd say that like that brings the ad revenue to about 44 grand a day on enters and around Ooh. 120 a day on uh, on rewarded ads so maybe 160k a day uh iaps from my data tool that i was using uh, I guess now we've proven it that it's actually the world's worst data tool. So <laughs> it says here that 2.6 million in the last four weeks on IAPs. So that means that 58% of that would be ad revenue. So on top of that. So, dude, I I just check. I'm just, I exactly uh, checked this now, and they are apparently making well like 50k a day on on in apps at the moment for last like three weeks or four weeks since they started scaling. So. Take By that. the way, do Which you one? also see that it's mainly on iOS and mainly I mean <laughs> exclusively? <laughs> um, yeah, I like I, I will get I will get there. Why they are uh, Squad Alpha, isn't that yeah, uh, Sega Games Squad game? Alpha. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, I will I will I will say uh, a few words about uh, their uh, they scaling on, on iOS quite heavily in the last few months, actually. Yeah. But like the big factor here is like I would love to know like how many tickets they're actually selling because that's like the big like X factor here. Like I don't know how many users are actually like opting out of the rewarded experience to actually just buy these tickets. If you work at say games and you want to tell me, I've never worked on a game like this. I would love to know because I think this is very clever. I don't. They are not selling any gachas because haha, there's no none of those in the shop. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, uh, check so that's from an admin perspective. Um, because you we want can... to take on UA, Mate, or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that I, would make I, sense. I yeah. want, but I just want to see, so, like, which which is the, like, top uh, in-app purchases. So, pack of tickets is basically one, two, three, four, fifth best. Uh, uh, pack of tickets is pack of... the forty. Or 849. Okay, so that's on the top five, uh, uh, fifth micro place in terms of mm -hmm. microtransactions, yes. So, okay. Dreamdale. Dreamdale. 
I actually downloaded this game like quite a while ago. Uh, How played... far did you guys get, by the way? Not that far. Not that no, far. As far as you did, for sure. Yeah. So I, I would I'm the say, only like... one torturing myself with all the force. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's your job, man. That's well, you're the job. only one exposing yourself to the genius admon strategization. That's the, probably the future of our beautiful industry. So, no, you're rewarding yourself. Wow. Oh, oh, okay. Next time, I'm tying you to a chair, force feeding you ads. <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> my job. So. Man. Yeah, honestly, uh, it's a very interesting game. I downloaded it before we even uh, thought about like uh, talking about it, and then of, of course forgot about it. And then I saw ads, and it's like, oh well, this is a game. I think I already downloaded it, so they um, they were targeting me on Facebook. So I clicked on the ad, and then get uh, got directly into the game. Uh, anyway, so as, as Jakob pointed out, it's survival base builder. So do you know any any other similar game we reviewed in the past? Uh, that is something close to this uh, this game, uh, exa- exactly uh, Frozen City or what Wild Out Survival or what you said like Golden Goblins. I mean, when I when I was looking into the creatives, uh, and I, I will show you some of the creatives, you will see where they are getting the inspiration from. Honestly, my my, my bet is the whole game is based on those creatives. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. But the, so I looked into the iOS and I versus Android because uh, you know everybody's talking about how iOS is dead and everything is dead and oh my fucking god they are scaling like crazy on iOS. <laughs> oh my god! So they started recently and I and by recently I mean like two or three months ago. Uh, so in June they hit 1.1 million downloads on iOS on iOS only. And this was the top uh, top month for them, uh, even more than than the global launch date uh, or global launch month. And do you know what happened three months ago? Do you have any guess, guys? It was your birthday. Uh, no. <laughs> In, I mean, connect, important update of the connected game. to the yeah. Well, almost. They started running Aplavin, and they mm-hmm. fucking exploded suddenly. Boom! Everything went uh, into the right direction, and I know exactly how they how they were able to do it. And I will let you know at the end of the end of this part. So <laughs> unless I watch a reward ad right now, and unless, then I can yeah, do it yeah. straight away. Uh, you can you can uh, offer me some skip it's if you want. <laughs> I have a ticket of skip it. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you have a bag of skip it's, let me know. Uh, I can tell you right away. Okay, but uh, anyway. In terms of the uh, the revenue, obviously, like top one is US. Then we have what like, Japan, Germany, UK, South Korea, Canada, Australia, France, Taiwan, and Switzerland. Usual suspects, I guess. Like this is uh, in-app purchases revenue only. But uh, if you look at the um, the UA channel mix app, Lavin, then we have Google, Facebook, even Integral, uh, and then Vangle, Unit, and TikTok. So. Let's actually let's actually sh- talk about the creatives. So so they're playable heavy on Apple. I mean, so let's let's look at this. And if you stop sharing uh, mm-hmm. the okay, screen, well. I will share the screen, the, my my screen, and then uh, I think it's, it's gonna be interesting. So it's the whole thing here. All right. So we have where's the playable here? So tell me. What do you see? Oh, whoops, that's uh, not. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Tell me, what do you see here? <laughs> that's Frozen City. Almost. Mm-hmm. Almost Frozen City. Try another game. Yeah, I could mention it before. Golden Goblins. It's Golden Goblins one to one, man. It's it? one to one, yes. It's just Pro- directly. Cosmo City is also copying Golden Goblins. Please. Exactly. So it's just like everything is connected. So this is their top, uh, top creative basically on Apple. I mean. and um, and it's playable, obviously, because. But, but this if... is uh, this is the first time that the game actually plays like exactly this. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I was I was playing the I was playing the uh, the cre- the creative, and it was actually amazing. <laughs> I mean. It's really satisfying uh, to play this uh, this playable, honestly. But 
they have like multiple iterations of this, uh, to be honest. And this is like their, I think, third, um, third iteration from where they started scaling on Apple. I mean, so every month they have one, one new uh, playable, which is good. I mean, if you want to scale Uplavin and other ad networks, you have playables. And if you want to scale heavily, you have more playables. And like every other week, you have a new playable, so you can you can test it, test it out. So this is this is everything that uh, you know. You you just you just play this all over again. Question. Yeah. Did you find actual any fake one? Actual and yeah, fake creatives. Mm-hmm. No, only altered gameplay. Because mm. this is definitely altered gameplay. I mean, it's but, but this is you actual do, gameplay. Yeah, I know. Like you do it, you do mm. exactly this in the game. But this, there's like no scene like this. Yeah. So, no, no, no. I mean, the, the, even the three assets used are exactly the same. I know, I know. In the game, how much spend yeah. went through that creative? Do you know roughly? It would be interesting I mean, to know. I don't, but it's mm. it's a top spender. So I, I guess like almost like ninety percent. Okay. Of the of the whole spend, I mean, look. So you don't have this scene, obviously, but. It's exactly what uh, uh, what I mean. It's not totally um, altered gameplay, but whatever. So they have diff- lots of different creatives, and I just want to show you this. Uh, <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> this one is Frozen you? City. Yeah, it reminds you something. Yeah. <laughs> is, is it Frozen City? Isn't it right? Tell survival. Oh, f- go for it. They were really similar. Man, it's the <laughs> same thing. The same game. It's yeah. the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. But it's actually well. My sticker just. Uh... Your Nelly, your Nelly sticker. Yeah, oh, my Nelly sticker. Potter. <laughs> I was playing with my daughter, so you know, a sticker. Game. Anyway, so they have different uh, different creatives. Uh, so let's see. So they have all these like gameplay oriented creatives, which is just That's almost like, like a play. That's quite realistic. Yeah. Yeah, this but, is super. But, but, man, as I said, this is the actual. This game. is the game. You literally huh. build the whole estate like this. That yeah. it's like starts an island, and then you just walk up to a counter, and it throws the resources in it, and yeah. bam, land comes out. But this is, but isn't this the the, the hyper casual type of thing that you actually have the the creative gameplay as a game? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's hyper casual. That's, that's the thing. So you have these like different scenes. I mean. I love these like different cuts. I mean, we we actually did this quite uh, some time in like multiple times in, in our creatives as well. Just different cuts, and even the music is actually pretty pretty nice. This is all actual gameplay. Nothing yeah. fake in it. I mean, why why would you fake these things? So I mean, the Frozen Cities, I guess that's fake. But they have also like these fights as well, and different cuts. I mean. You know, we said fight scenes, there was exploration, there was like gameplay oriented. I mean, everything is around the gameplay anyway. So you have all these different angles that uh, they are exploring at the moment. Boss fights. Love it. Would you say actually then the, like the, the big unlock for uh, say games on Dream, uh, like on, on this title was just working with Apple Oven? Oh yeah. I will get there. Jeez. I will get there. So, you know, they have all of, all of this. Like no, li- <laughs> yeah, Lily. Yeah, that's perfect, right? <laughs> Diablo. Damn. Okay. It's, this is, like, this is the fucking create, creativity of your team. It's, it's amazing. So you have Lilith, you have, like, this Diablo-ish type of creative. I was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I know Lilith right. from Wish. Yeah, Lilith, Lilith from, from Wish. From Wish. <laughs> <laughs> Great, right? And this, this is also look. It's a different style, right? So this is not how the game actually looks like. Yeah, it's a little bit different. But see this avatar over here uh, from from iOS. I mean, Jakub, you don't know, but mm. we we know. It's just, it's it's a good use of this type of like it's 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 different. It's the only time I, someone has ever used it. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I, this is the first time I've I've seen it. And I was like, ah, it's actually quite uh, quite interesting. This was the most fake-ish that I saw. Yeah, most fake. It was different, uh, 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 different visual style. But then, uh, so they have also different creatives on TikTok. Obviously. Is he real? Yeah, he's real. Yeah. He's, he's real. Hands. Nobody's real anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's real. 
Yeah, the real Felix, he died two years ago. This is just an avatar. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> So yeah, this is uh, this is on TikTok, and then they have uh, another TikTok because it, this is fake. The the voice is fake, obviously. Uh, mm. gameplay is true. Yeah, the gameplay is true, but then like the everything else is fake. But I guess uh, it's okay. So, what's your Maven Mate position out of this? Yeah, just uh, wait for Maven Mate position because I was really excited. I was really really excited about about uh, about this game. So you know. So they have a lot of different creatives. I love the depth though. Exploration, resource gathering, the, there's also like customization of the character, like not customization per se, but they're showing the character all, all, the, all the things you can, you can have. Leverage the power of loyalty-driven UA with Mistplay. Users discover a collection of curated games to play based on their interests. The more they play, the more units they earn. The more they spend on in-app purchases, they also earn. Units can be redeemed for their preferred rewards, including a variety of gift cards. Tapping into our exclusive and growing community of engaged gamers at a global scale. Loyalty works for any game and genre. All the items. And uh, the avatars from iOS, uh, they also try to, to catch attention with different hooks, and I will show that in the in the post-production because it's like mesmerizing creative uh so a lot of different angles now how they were able to grow like crazy on uplavi so it seems uh as i said like they're refreshing creatives like every month based on the the tools that we have so and i'm also pretty sure they're mediating with max right uh, felix oh, yeah most likely yeah like, most i'm 99 percent sure this is max yeah, yeah yeah me too me too so they're able to run blended rust campaigns what are these, you might ask? Well, the best from wo both worlds. So you're optimizing for in-app purchases and in-app ads revenue in one campaign. So you have day zero ROAS goal of blended IIP and IAA. And this works like magic, seriously. Like this can scale like fucking wildfire. It Is works so well. Extra good because it's 50-50 probably split here on IAPs and ad revenue is even better. I think I think here the split is even more skewed towards the ads, which 58%, makes percent, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, this this definitely works. I've seen a few games that scaled heavily thanks to this, spending from like going from spending like 20k per day to almost like 200 k per day. Which is like eighty percent of that is only on Aplavin uh, blended ROAS. So yes, how, how like, much? Just the non-UI yeah. person question. How much of that percentage share you would say would you need in order for this blended thing to work? Like what, sixty forty or sixty forty? Yeah, seventy thirty tops, but sixty forty fifty fifty is the best. Still, if if you have, I mean, what I've seen game with 75% in-apps and 25% ads doing super well on blended blended ROAS mm -hmm. because then the Aplavin kind of uh, takes the best out of ads so it kind of shifts the the equation the other way around mm -hmm. so you will get like what like 70% of on ads but then like 30% on in-apps on this specific campaign works amazing really really good really good so so that's I think that's how they can also grow quite heavily on iOS and there's like man we we can see the spike <laughs> we can see the spike quite quite heavily there uh there's one interesting tidbit uh it's like they opened up TikTok two weeks ago. I showed you the creatives uh, uh which is i mean I guess TikTok ish type of creative, but yeah, I think the upload in here is just like the the best thing. Uh, and, and like in, most interesting tidbit. So humble Maven Mate rating ten out of ten. I'm I'm I was really really I was really really like uh, amazed by the, the all of the different creatives. There's no fake creative. That's the thing. No fake. So you are playing with what you have. You don't need to use fake creatives. You have playables. You have apply. I mean, you have almost like yeah different creatives. You have the Diablo ish oriented creative. And uh, come on, get. So has Apple been made this blended ROAS just specifically for this shift to hybrid casual from hyper hyper casual? Seems uh, like perfect timing, right? 
No, I think like well, they have it for for a while. I mean, now the hybrid casual is just the best use use case, and it's man it doesn't even need to be hybrid casual. It you have way different ga- like way more different genres that have fifty fifty split. So you have you can have idle games, uh, very big ones on the blended ones as well. Okay. Do we okay. move on to pirate? No, game design part, man. Wait oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> almost, uh, almost got, almost got him. <laughs> um, yeah. So the thing here is that uh, the ads are pretty much everywhere uh, to the point where it pretty much diminishes whatever you do in the game. Like uh, farming, no. Res- no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. <but> farming <laughs> no. resources at some point doesn't make sense because it's just much better to watch an ad because just by time ratio, how much time it would take you to farm those whatever, 200 apples where you can watch an ad, which gives you 100 apples, which you can sell for 200 or something gold. So mm. it's very, very, very skewed towards the ads. Like, this is a completely different hybrid casual setup compared to something like, let's say, Survivor IO. Because Survivor IO, they don't inflate their economy away. These guys don't have a problem, which, like, whatever you need, you can have it for the ads immediately like like whatever i do every building every upgrade they immediately have like plus 100 soft currency ad like built in <laughs> that you can watch forever so you can literally just sit here and watch ads all the time and you will be progressing very very far so there's no caps or did you see any caps felix absolutely not yeah no. so th- this is the main exactly th- this needs to be said like pretty straightforward this is not the hybrid casual model that we've been talking about through hobbies template or like all the other games even mob control to some degree is a little bit more conservative compared to this like this is full on ads plus iaps so so why do we even talk about this game if it's not hybrid casual it is hybrid casual. Oh, I'm okay. just saying it's just a different kind of a side of a, a coin. It's a different okay. take on hybrid casual. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the Felix take. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you yeah. so mean? Why are you so mean? so mean? Like it's the ads, man. It's <laughs> ads make you angry. <laughs> The... You play too much waifu games. That's why you're not uh, used to these ads. This yeah, is how a majority yeah. of like you know games are discovered. These guys oh. are just giving back to the gaming community oh, by allowing pub advertisers to showcase ads in their games. Well, yeah, let's continue. Just, just um, buy skip it. One thing that I really don't like, or let's say I think is a missed opportunity, is that they don't sell gachas within the whole like oh, they took the archer HP attack itemization. I'm. I haven't even seen any difficulty within the combat system or like this whole kind of combat system seem ducted to it. Like That's what I wanted to say because the combat system is just like you need there. To, you, no, you need to go there because there's no way to get gems. And for gems, you actually build like statues and these blueprints and all these like high level things that they have here. But the only way to get them reliably is to go into dungeons. Mm. So you need to go there. So there's some pool there, but... It's kind of duct tape. So there's a big mix opportunity because also in the shop, like I cannot spend on my gear. There's nothing here. Like you would, even the pirate raid has gacha in it. So like, there's definitely a mix opportunity where I think this game could make much more money on IAP. Yeah, they have, ga- they have gacha, gacha in there, but the game is dying. So well done. <laughs> ah, no, we'll get there. <laughs> and uh, Okay. Yeah, it's it's pretty much built on forcing you to have the skippets and the like the whole thing like to get rid of ads because it's literally interstitials all the way. Like it's not that that that, that bad as in the pirate game that that's even worse. But yeah, it, it's there. <laughs> on the other hand, the other interesting thing is that in my opinion, this game was wholly built by UA. Like I'm sorry, but the, like the whole thing, the premise. Why? Why are you sorry? It's amazing. No, no, I'm just saying like UA people pretty much took over the job of the product people here because UA is the product fit here. That's 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 the whole thing. Like it's just that creative being Yes, and we we can end there. Thank you very much for listening. It's <laughs> like not saying that the game is bad. Like the game's actually pretty amazing from the start. Like I was yeah. really really liking it in the first when I built this whole thing. Like you start with a small island and then you like by the way there's no map and you get lost there. I uh, would be glad if they could have some something like that. But the game is pretty good in the beginning. And the genius of the concept is that 
they offloaded all of the like UIs and buildings and whatever simulation part where you click here, upgrade here, upgrade there. You don't need to care about anything. You just walk into somewhere, the game does everything for you. So you mm. stand near trees, it shops them for you. You stand near a building, it builds it for you. Nothing you need to do, just one button control, genius. That's great. Uh, other than that, it's very rudimentary RPG survival. So for a person that never played this kind of a whatever, like it's actually a little <laughs> bit close to Stardew Valley, it could be amazing. Like, don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's kind of a... So what this, gacha would you add on to this? Like the easiest thing to make a big improvement? But they have the gacha here. Like, why, why, don't, why don't they do something with it? Like, I want to have better gear, but why would I want to have better gear if there's no difficulty within the dungeons? Like, yep. I can, I can you do don't need everything. It. Like, yeah. You don't, I need, don't it. need it. Like, why? I, I want to have challenging bosses or whatever, or some kind of a, you know, gate king. Yeah. So there's a missed opportunity, definitely. But my guess is that, uh, yeah, it fits them well, even with the current state where everything kind of goes along its way. Like, lastly, I was putting sheep into a sheep mixer that was giving me wool or whatever thing there. Was there? Yeah, literally, I'll show you. I was but, putting but sheep the, in the sheep mixer. But the gameplay is kind of nice. They have this kind of reference design. You have seen the hand from Adam's family or the sheep yeah. or Lilith or whatever they have there. So it, it's, it's, it's still kind of good. But the interesting thing for me and the like the lesson from me on this game will be <laughs> ua can build your game literally like yeah. ua can build your game profitably and my guess is that by there our you go usual, <clears> there you go accuracy standards we are underestimating the game revenue by 50 percent probably oh maybe well, even more i mean the delta between the two the uh, two platforms that we use or yeah it's like crazy it's just it's huge and also these numbers you can't like yeah just, yeah and also yeah uh, from the the discussions we had uh, so we are underestimating the revenue quite heavily so it's like what like three or four times usually so what do we say yeah double yeah. or triple so my we are we are getting to, to real numbers my realist dream or rating would be eight out of ten and mm -hmm. if you would have that gacha, you would get nine or ten. But because you don't have it, like, yeah, please paste it somewhere. You will get much more revenue and make dungeons challenging at, at some point. But yeah, other than that, the game's like, as I said, builds built as a perfect funnel for UA and yeah. for everything. No, yeah, 100%. Okay. Pirate Raid? Yeah. Do you want to Continue do the with the Pirate right? Yeah, yeah, let's get some gameplay and Pirate Raid up. Oh, my God. I have very little to say this, but yeah. <laughs> why are you so Why are you so excited about the pirate game? It's... I love pirate. Who doesn't like pirates? Man, there's like deficiency of pirate games in the market. We all want them, and we you don't know why? Them. Because it, yeah, I need it to doesn't... hold up my closer view. Yeah, because it doesn't work. I mean, it, it works great. Yeah, I see. I see it. it, it it's all yeah. The game is why dead. Don't the, why don't you have the Queen Anne's Revenge? Like yeah, that's the boat you should be on in that level. What? The game is dead. It works super well. <laughs> yep. Amazing. Yeah, you can start, Felix. Yeah, the uh, Pirate Raid, I guess, is uh, another interesting take on hybrid casual. Uh, <laughs> it's got all the hallmarks of a hybrid casual. It's got banners, inters, and rewarded videos. However, uh, the data tool I've been using, which is the world's worst, I guess, has been told me that the DAU is quite small. So, yeah. It's quite got, small like, because the game is you know, dead. Yeah, the game is right? dead. iOS is pretty much non existent. <laughs> Uh, the gameplay is fun, but I'm going to say something that's going to sound a bit foreign, but like the admon is way too aggressive here. Oh, <laughs> this is a first. <laughs> yeah, no, wow. I, I played for about 40 or 50, like 40 minutes and like it takes like not very long. You start getting hit with so many interstitials and like there's not that much cooldown between them. So like it just feels like they went way too aggressive on how many rewarded ads and how many interstitials you need to watch. And the thing that also sticks out to me here, like Rima, if you stop sharing this screen just for a little minute. Uh, so Mintigral have come out with this new end card template on interstitials and rewarded uh, videos. And I think they take the reward now for the most annoying end card in our industry. <laughs> so I just did a little recording and I'm going to share it. Man, uh, if I need to edit this again in the post-production because you can't share then I will just fucking See, kill you. I prepared it because I knew you were going to complain. <laughs> so if we start okay. with interstitial, you see here, it's already 20 seconds and then you can skip it, right? But like, skip it. You get to the end 
and there's a playable. <laughs> and then okay. you can't skip the interstitial after you start the playable. So this is the interstitial one. It's not that bad. So now you How can skip it, you and then you have to click out of it. It's 32 seconds, but you can skip out after, I think it was 14 or 15 seconds. But the real annoying one is the new format they brought out on Rewarded Video. And oh, choose your it's, yeah, man. it's so <laughs> annoying. So you, first of all, you're hit with this choice. You have to choose yeah. which ad you're going to watch. And you have 10 seconds to choose. Or and the thing, is, the thing is, is, if you click on one of the videos, you're punished. Because then oh. actually, if you don't wait the 10 seconds, it actually restarts a timer from like 30 seconds. So <laughs> the big thing that you want to do is, for the love of God, like choose. <laughs> Otherwise, you get a longer ad experience. So anyway, you see it kind of... <laughs> Yeah, and you get 20 seconds here, and you have the SK overlay at the bottom. So you watched, at the end of this, you watched an ad for 30 seconds. Hey, I'm, yeah, I hope you will get With play, the SK overlay, afterwards. and then like when this finishes, right? That's when you expect the ad to be over, but no. This is not when it finishes, because this is when it jumps into the playable yes, for yes. five seconds. <laughs> and then Amazing. when the playable finishes, SK overlay over the whole screen. And then you have to oh. click another X button and then another X button and then you're out. <laughs> well, so I saw I saw this like uh choose the video. It's is it Mintegral only? Yeah, it's Mintegral. Or... It's Mintegral is the only oh, one, I think. Okay. Yeah. I saw it I saw it once or twice already. Yeah, like uh AdMob do something similar, but it's not as annoying where they basically bunch together two 15 second videos, uh like mm. in the 30 second ad slots, but yeah, just wanted to yeah. highlight it because it came yeah, up. Could, quite you can, a lot you can on share the, yeah, yeah, if you can no, share again the gameplay. Play. Oh man! It's I mean, <laughs> <poor set. laughs> you want to play the you want to play a game, but then you are just watching rewarded videos. Oh, not yeah. even not even rewarded videos. Yeah, you're you're watching, yeah. Sorted, but you're this playing one was way too like videos. this is way too. So they have banners. You're, you're I, I playing counted. interstitial game. I think like I don't know how long the gameplay is here, but I'm, I suspect banners impressions per DAU is about fifty. Imp impressions per DU on interstitial is seven and I counted myself watching seven rewarded ads as well <laughs> so like it's about 50 50 split or something like that because it's so aggressive um it gives you about 13.7k a day um uh, me and Matia have very different DAU levels or IAP levels, IAP uh, levels so yeah. basically Matia said it makes 3k a day in IEPs and my says it uh, makes around eight and a half K a day in IEPs in the last two weeks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's yeah. Either fifth, like either it's like 44% or 60% of the games revenue yeah. is from ads, but okay. yeah, that's just the Delta between the two, but really so cool. Like take, cause I like pirate games, but it's just a <laughs> bit too much to play. Like I can't, <laughs> you can't play literally. That's yeah. the you, you can't yeah. play. Yeah. You can't play. So again, uh, okay. So again, why are we even talking about this game? Because uh, it's too aggressive. Okay, because uh, again, because we're the... talking about failures and wins also. Oh, of course. Yeah, so Jingdale uh, is definitely a win. This is yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I guess yeah. We should yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we should balance the uh, the success. That's true. Because this game is dead. <laughs> He's dead. Is there that was so a, a, Eastern European Nelly. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No way. Uh, so it's uh, it's the unfortunate shark thing happened in terms of downloads, and since then uh, we see decline. So they had this peak uh, of revenues, which was two hundred sixty thousand in March. So I guess what if even if it's like for half a mil from the other tool on in apps. Uh, pfft, I'm not sure, like, this is not even close to, to Dreamdale. So, but okay. In terms of the UA channel mix, uh, I was like, this this game feels like uh, it's not on the top of the Say game spending list because they have Aplavin, well, obviously, Google, Facebook, and TikTok. So Aplavin is running since the beginning, but they only have one playable. Which is basically a video they run, so uh, they yeah they run on the, on on, on Uplavin as well. So is it they fake? even what is it fake or not? No, it's j just the gameplay. Mm -hmm. oh, was that interstitial? Oh, how surprising! How surprising! <laughs> so they you know they even post Facebook in June. So I guess they have the bare minimum to keep this game alive, but for how long? And what does it mean, <laughs> life in this? Uh, in this. Uh, yeah, by the way, that's the question for me. If they at some point can uh, conclude that this game is not worth, worth like you know, 
expanding anymore. So let's squeeze as much ads out of possible. So let's I go think so as well. Felix on it. <laughs> or, or it was like that before from the start. <laughs> No, I think I think yeah, they saw the game is not doing that well, so it's like, oh well, let's squeeze the most out of the players, and then just slap the like, interstitials in your face every ten seconds. Can you fight goddamn Scylla, please. He's right up there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fight him. Yeah. Sorry. Because like this is literally like if I if I would imagine Felix with like Dragon Ball Z ads power, like this is it. Like there's so much ads it's yeah. everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. You can't play it. Like it's prohibiting. Like pretty much whatever you do, like you just cannot. And, yeah. Uh, Honestly, like you can you can always see like how much resources, effort, and and like money is allocated to each game based on the uh, the creative mix as well, and the the UA channel mix because they have only very few different videos. They seem see that to was be, that was a minute and a half. Or like yeah. less than a minute yeah. and a half less between interstitials. Like literally black mirror. <laughs> yeah. It's just well but again. Vangalad. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah, we need to do the the, uh, the episode where you just say which uh which <laughs> test uh, ad network test is it. Test yeah, it will test you. <laughs> Again, in terms of creatives, and I will show it in the post production because it's uh, it's not that interesting, um, honestly. Uh, it's just classic loose upgrade win scenarios. There's only one interesting creative of Kraken destroying ships. Can you show it? Oh yeah, you can show it. Yeah. I can show it right now. Whoa. What? Uh, there is. There it is. <laughs> what? Oh well. well like, I will we'll show it in the, the post production. Anyway, yeah. uh, like, it's, it's, yeah, you okay. know, it's uh, it's not that interesting. And there are like few leveling up videos uh, that you level up ship and then just destroy different things. So yeah, I guess again, just to balance out the Dream Dale success, uh, we need to talk about something very lame and ads heavy. And I see this video creative like third or fourth time uh, while you play minutes. this. Yeah, yeah just terrible. But it looks like they're on a 60 second timer on interstitial, which is. Yeah. Oh, impressive. Man, it's, uh, it's impressive. Well, anyway, um, so humble, humble Maven Matei rating two out of ten, uh, and two is only because of the Kraken video. <laughs> Goddamn Zilla is actually better. This yeah, like, Goddamn Zilla is actually quite funny. So yeah. second map. Okay, so let me do my take. This one actually looked a little bit more promising when I started it because there's <laughs> decks, what? There's gachas. Gacha there's ball. like lot of spend depth actually in the game. Nobody is, cares about. Yeah, yeah I'll get cares to it. About it. The problem is that the core gameplay is a little bit half-assed. That's the problem, <laughs> because honestly, this kind of a one-button control—you just control the ship and it attacks automatically. It is kind of sporadic from the times of uh, Warcraft 3 Battle.net, where we all play this like genius map called Battleships. Oh where if I see the Age of Magic ad again, I will just kill myself right away. <laughs> <laughs> so just wait one mi one minute. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you would control the ship and it would pretty much fire upon enemy ships itself and you would just control the direction, like very similar gameplay. You didn't need to position yourself here because here, imagine like I always need to position myself. I cannot just, you know, run away and it would fire. I know it's, it's kind of accurate, but in the end it is a hassle to control. So I would definitely remove that because it worked much better back then. Maybe the if you control thing, it on your phone and not on your PC, it would be better. better man. You still need to <laughs> move over either to port or starboard. Uh, the other thing is that the weapons there was the whole gameplay and like how it was interesting. There's literally nothing to do here. You just do these like whatever 50 quests that are all the same. You just go in this kind of a random roundish area that have like other ships on top of it and that's it like it's fun for 10 minutes that's it like there's no like other kind of content progression there's and in those 10 minutes you don't have time to watch enough ads to make yeah. the ltv calculation yeah. profitable <laughs> ads that kill you in the first place like they they like my guess is they set up this kind of uber ad setup only afterwards they figure out it's not worth their time but there seems to have like a lot of vectors in the game in order to kind of you have the vectors and systems there. but you can see with the banner placement like that's half-assed like it's going yeah, on yeah, the gameplay yeah. screen like it's, it's going over quick, the UI. quick and dirty yeah 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 so my guess is they, they they were probably trying and had like a promising prototype and then at some point they said screw it let's like milk it 
But like, no, I mean, look, it's it's that after the, I mean, not that because the revenue was increasing until March. Uh, then it started, it peaked and it started to decline again. But downloads, like, they stay you know, yeah, at a very yeah. minimum level. Yeah, the, the thing is that I've seen a few games actually on the market that are trying this exact core gameplay. I haven't seen a successful one yet. We'll keep an eye on it because I think eventually it will be a successful game as I've seen it in Warcraft 3 Battle.net. Like Dota came out of it and like all the other mods like the tower defenses and everything. But you need to execute it properly. This game just doesn't have content to stand on its legs. So even though compared to Dreamdale, this actually have a gacha. These have like a spend-up system. It is actually pretty heavy. Like look at all the abilities of the like sailors and everything. There's a lot of things to kind of go through. But um, yeah, if you don't really use it for anything else than killing goddamn Zillas that gets interrupted by interstitials, it's <laughs> really not worth it, your time. So yeah, unfortunately, that that's bad. But the other thing is interesting here that you can screw it up even though you are, you know, on the right track, I would say. So Gacha won't save you. That That's the other kind of a, a learning here. That like just slapping the Archero or whatever kind of six slot model and putting mm. Gacha in it and then proclaiming that, oh, it will now make money from IAPs also isn't like the best thing ever if your core gameplay just isn't worth it. So I guess... They had to, like, in my opinion, whoever was prototyping this, they missed the point that core gameplay is not only like you being able to shot ships. That, that's that's not core gameplay. You need to have some kind of a, like within level progression or whatever. Like, why I'm doing this all the time if it doesn't make any sense? And to watch ads. It, you do this. Yeah. To watch ads. And, and, and like you turn into like a matrix ad watching machine. Like you're still. Yeah. To... <laughs> and to Felix's point, by the way, why would I even upgrade any other ship? Because every other ship that I would start upgrading would start from scratch with the same exact stats. So why would I invest the gold again? Like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense at all. So some of the things are really half-assed, unfortunately. But yeah, I guess I'll keep a lookout for everybody that will actually execute this core pirate gameplay properly. At the end, not this one. Which will uh, be nobody. The last lesson here is that this is pretty much the complete other end of the spectrum. Like, we had, like... Survivor IO, then we have Dreamdale, and then we have this, which pretty much force feeds you all the ads that it can. So don't do this. I would say it definitely is not worth it. I would even argue that adding more gacha and challenging the dungeons in Dreamdale and cutting on force feed ads could help also, but would definitely worth a try or an A B test. But yeah, this this model won't work at all, in my opinion. Like force feeding you all the all the all the things would, would would probably work within hyper casual but not something that wants to be hybrid casual and it's not so let's see so yeah four out of ten yeah way Ooh. too aggressive on the for effort no, no. for effort oh nice okay all right so we have we had dreamdale which is amazing or good enough oh uh, how, it's really good i mean Actually, before before we wrap up and finish i just wanted to ask like how would you say like if you sum up say games and voodoo's forays into mm. hybrid casual how would you say they differ and how would you say they're the same um or who does are, better yeah who does yeah, yeah. my i think uh say games. say games i think problem, so too right the problem with voodoo one is that they don't have many of these and it's still better to have like five failed pirate raids in your portfolio because you actually see how many other prototypes they killed already so they're like the frequency they're probably putting on is much higher than what voodoo already has with hybrid casual not hyper casual just mm. like note there uh the other thing is that you keep on piling knowledge also because of all these fails so as i said 10 failed pirate raids is still better than just one good mob control. Okay, but we don't know how many failed uh, uh, games Voodoo has. Um, what? Uh, you don't. Uh, you, you would see something at least in the portfolio. Why? Why not? Why, why say games keep them? On, like, yeah, that's, uh, yeah I, I'm asking the same question. Why would you have the, the dead game and just support it with the, like minimum uh, UA? Maybe they're working on it and trying to do a, a different iteration. Don't know, but uh, the other in interesting thing is that you don't see a pattern between these two games, like you would see between, let's say, hobby portfolio. Like there's a clear template there. None of these guys doesn't seem to have a template, which yet. I think is a yeah yet, yet which is yet. a problem currently because it's even in the article from Neil it says that those are both built by individual studios that are it's, it's not yeah yeah. 
It's uh, what did you? I think Estoti and uh, the other one was what? what yeah, was? yeah. Uh, they're still lack, lacking the lacking the you know the synergies between it because you cannot get to the point where you're just reinventing the wheel. Like you need to have just like this is the template, this is the like IP system, this is the gacha for an RPG, this is the mm. whatever you want to build multiple of these templates so you can like not every core gameplay fits and uh, like roguelite RPG, and then you can you know increase the frequency. It's all about the frequency. You need to have as many shots as possible to get that next hybrid casual hit. So yeah, it's better than Voodoo, but still not there. But definitely, I would I would guess that. The Dreamdale one is like the next generation of hybrid casual games. Like if, if mm. we would start with Archero and Survivor IO at some point, this is the next gen where the creative is actually the gameplay. Well, but Archero and Survivor IO they have also the uh the creative as a gameplay. Um Man. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. Most part. Uh, Archero, Archero no. Survivor IO, yes. Archer started with the yeah, Archer started. Archer also has that like whatever like thousand zombies running and you know whatever bullshit that they don't have that in game. Now yes, because they found out that it it actually works quite well with Survivor. Yeah, but it's a, it's a you know it's a spectrum. It's not like one to one. Okay. All right. I guess that's it. That's a wrap. Yeah, yeah. and play Dave the Diver. Trust Dave. me, <laughs> you will thank me later. Oh my god. <laughs> Yes. Thanks, Remo, for later. Thank, thank you, Remo. Uh, thank, you, Remo. Right. thank you very much for listening. Uh, please keep subscribing. Share the, the podcast with your industry friends, colleagues, dogs and cats. And see you next time. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Exactly, we are all, all already uh, already bigger, so it's fine. So it's okay. So it's nice being we... bigger. Yeah, oh, sure. but you know, you, you can't be a big dick. That's 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 true. Thing. How should we go about this? Uh, um, admon first, or what do you want to do? Game, game design. Time? I just do don't want same? Remo to steal my thunder on the admon side on Dreamdale because it's genius. I can go last, like no worries there. No, no. <laughs> what should we do? What makes yeah. sense here? Oh, like the usual one. Like, can you, uh, when you I do the admin part, can you show gameplay, Remo? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, wait, I need to prepare something. <laughs> it will be more interstitial than gameplay. Sorry, the pirate one keeps sending itself into interstitial. <laughs>